Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the From the Vault series where I dig out a box from my vault and take a look and see what treasures it has inside. In the first, um, the first installment, um, we had a lot of um, Space Age pop and Exotica titles, and uh, this video was gonna, is going to uh, continue along that line with a few other surprises thrown in, so I hope you enjoy it. So, um, let's see. This one actually is not even in either category, but um, it's called Border Town Bandito. Border Town Bandito. Uh, 50 Guitars of Tommy Garrett. And he did a whole series of these um, on the Liberty Premier label. Um, which was a premium audiophile type offering. Um, they came with a die cut cover and a gatefold sleeve with a gold label and really good pressing quality. And these are as it says, guitar extravaganzas, um, 50 guitars supposedly employed in the record. And um, each one is along a different theme. This is kind of a Mexican theme one. So um, these are worth uh, checking out if you see them. He's done about probably a dozen. Um, let's see. This is a bunch of got a bunch of odd stuff in here, which makes it fun. This is a soundtrack to Jack the Ripper. Um, and music is composed by Jimmy McHugh and Pete Rubilo. So that's a living stereo title. Um, not much to say about it, but it's got a fantastic cover. I guess it's a, you know, I can't even tell you. I thought it was a little crime jazz, but it might not be. I haven't listened to it in a long time. <clears throat> okay, so this is the iconic Martin Denny Quiet Village. Um, this kickstarted the Exotica craze and tradition of having a lovely model on your covers of these exotic releases. This is on the Liberty label and uh, this is a must have for Exotica fans. Nice pressing. <clears throat> okay, this is a little different. Uh, this is guitarist Tony Motola. Um, well, that's not him, but that's a model. But um, he was a talented studio uh, musician who recorded for Command and later for um, Enoch Light, Light's a second or third project called Project 3. Makes sense. Um, which was a continuation of his Command series, releases, audiophile type titles, beautiful gatefolds, laminated. Um, this is uh, really cool because some of the titles are hip hits from that era um come together something lay lady lay yester me yester you yesterday and windy sugar sugar 
spinning wheel, chewy chewy gum gum. <laughs> I guess that's bubble gum pop. But that is a good record and it sounds good too. Um, And we talked about um, Terry Snyder last time, uh, who did the provocative percussion uh, record for Command, and is a very talented um, percussionist. He did a couple of uh, titles for this label. It's um, from United Artists, and it's their premium stereo showcase label called Ultra Audio. And uh, their tagline is wall to wall stereo. And this is called per, uh, gentle percussion. Gentle percussion. And there's the little cat. And there's uh, Terry Snyder. And these are really done nicely. They're fully laminated gate folds. It was really a luxury product. Um, and sounds fantastic. If you ever see this record, get it. Don't hesitate. It's really cool. Um, we talked last time a little bit about Edmundo Ross and his uh, Latin band. Uh, this is from later in his career when he moved uh, from London full frequency stereophonic sound to uh, phase four stereo and as I said last time I think he lost a little bit of his magic when they went to phase four even though it might have been a little bit better recorded um, it just doesn't have the same magic but this one is called bongos from the south and bongos were very popular in this percussion era and um I don't know, I can't really recommend this one. Um, I would suggest the earlier Edmundo Ross albums. And I'll show you a couple examples of those. <clears throat> Here's one right here. Um, this is London Full Frequency Stereophonic Sound. It comes in a blueback jacket and Edmundo Ross made six or seven albums uh, in this series, which are all excellent. This one takes the current uh, themes of the day from Broadway, such as uh, hmm, things from Oklahoma, My Fair Lady, Can Can, South Pacific, Indians Rainbow, Carousel. So all the big uh, showstoppers done in Latin style and uh, these records are really recorded well and well worth seeking out. Um, they're a lot of fun to dance to. Uh, let's see. Here's another David David Carroll disc. We, we saw a couple last time. This one is called Repercussion um, on the Mercury label, and it's got a fantastic cover. And it was part of the percussion craze. Let's see. This one is also called Repercussion. Now this one is really interesting because this is on a concert disc label, which is one of the early early stereo labels. In fact, they pioneered the stereo tape um, and were considered uh, an audiophile label. Excuse me just a second. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me do that again. So this one is on the concert disc label and it uh, concert disc was an audiophile label. They um, pioneered the stereo tape uh, for home use, and this was one of their early um, records called Repercussion. 
And what's interesting about it, besides it's in minty condition and spill and shrink, is um, that it's by Dick Shorey, who did a music for Bang Bar Room and Harp that I think I mentioned last time. And uh, this one, although not quite the audiophile spectacular that that is, is well worth seeking out as well. So that's uh, Repercussion by Dick Shorey. Here's another one from uh, a small label called Life um, that did uh, Arthur Lyman's later records. And this one's called Yellow Bird. It does come in another cover as well. Uh, this was the second cover, I believe. And in it, they have a lot of information about uh, the recording. So it's kind of uh, like most uh, these releases from that era, it uh, focuses on audiophile quality. And uh, that's pretty rare. I don't see that very often. Uh, speaking of Pete Rugolo, who did the Jack the Ripper soundtrack, here's one of his percussion records on Mercury. Uh, percussion at Work. It's got a great, great cover. It's in a great shape. That's Hi-Fi Stereo from Mercury. Oh, I want to save that one for last. Here's a living stereo called Rumba for Moderns by Belmonte and his orchestra. Classic cover. Looks uh, exotic and Latin. And this is a dance record by a real authentic Latin artist. Here's a really cool one. It's called, it's from Marty Gold, who did several uh, groundbreaking records uh, and expanded um, what's possible with sound. He did this one called Skin Tight for a Living Stereo. And one of my favorite covers shows the model half undressed banging on bongos. I thought that was very attractive. And uh, it is Soundsational drum based record. We talked about Esquivel last time. This is another copy of Strings of Flame. And then we get to this Command series. So Command was started by Enoch Light, and he had a label before this, but this one was the one that broke all records. He wanted to do the best stereophonic records possible at the beginning of the stereo era. And he came up with command records um, for discriminating people who desire the finest in sound, always demand command. That's what they say. And he uh, partnered with Joseph Albers, who's a noted designer, to do the covers, at least for the first few um, records. So he does some great graphic designs. Um, these are. Uh, percussion based records. And this one actually is by Enoch Light in the Light Brigade. Very well recorded. There was volume two as well. It's another great um, Joseph Albers cover. Same type of thing. Uh, the hits of the day and of yesterday done in percussion style. This is the alternative series that he had going at the same time called Persuasive Percussion, also with a cover by Joseph Albers. And uh, this one is by Terry Snyder, Terry Snyder and the All-Stars. So that's uh, his command debut. Sorry for 
hear all the noise. Hmm. I don't think we covered this one last time. This was uh, noted in the book Incredi Incredibly Strange Music. Uh, Mallet Magic is by ha uh, Harry Brewer. Harry Brewer and his quintet. It's a great percussion record with a fabulous cover. Uh, here's a good example of a desirable Edmundo Ross album, Rhythms of the South. This is a London blueback and one of his best um, early stereo records. As I said, stick with the blueback ones, avoid the face four ones. Here's a beautiful example of Martin Denny's magic, The Enchanted Sea. Um, this is uh, always has a great model on the cover. Exotica. <clears throat> Marty Gold also did a record for the Vic label called Wired for Sound. Kind of fun cover. Current supplied by Marty Gold. That's a hard to find one. Dick Hyman, who we mentioned earlier in the earlier video, also did this record for command called The Man from Organ. And it has Crime jazz themes done on organ. Pretty interesting. Here's another Ross album, Ross at the Opera. This is the blue back as well. And uh, hits from the operas. Mm. Here's an oddball one. I want to finish with that though. Let me show you one more David Carroll called Latin Percussion with the dancing girls again. Actually, it's the same girl in different poses. This was on their luxurious uh, Perfect Present Sound series from Mercury. It's amazing the, the money that went into these records. Speaking of money going into records, this is another Perfect Present sound series released from George Barnes called Guitars Galore. This one, in fact, is recorded on 35 millimeter film rather than tape. Very expensive process, only reserved for special sessions and classical sessions. Um, so that they must have thought highly of that. And trying to move along quickly because Peter Gunn, this is the one that started the whole crime jazz uh, scene. And if any record in this group is worth getting, it's this one. Here is the follow-up. It was so successful. This is more music from Peter Gunn. Both of them are equally as good. And let's see. Here's a pretty cover, Parante and Teicher, Heavenly Sounds and Hi-Fi, Pianists. I think I'm going to tie it up in a minute. Let me just, there's a couple more here I want to go over. This is another wall-to-wall -wall stereo release from Ultra, uh, Ultra Audio, United Artists, and you can see they've Taken a cue from command and done the bold graphic design and combining odd instruments together, bongos and woodwinds and guitars. Al Caiola did this record. It's, he's a very talented guitarist, session guitarist. Here's one of the earliest phase four titles from Stanley Black called Exotic Percussion. And, um, 
they did this on their new 20 track console it's got everything you should you would want exotica and percussion all in one i'm going to tie it up with this one because <clears throat> it's so rare beat tropical beat tropical by jose bethencourt and his orchestra check that cover it is gorgeous this is on concert disc as i mentioned earlier they were an early audiophile label um this is rather hard to find you probably won't see one in the wild you might have to get it on discogs if you want to check it out it's interesting uh second cut is called savage drum fantasy so with exotica everything is savage and rituals and stuff like that and that's what makes it fun the late 50s were a fun time for audio <clears throat> and stereo uh, buffs because of all these type of releases pushing the boundaries of stereo reproduction um, so that's it for this box i will pull out another interesting box in the next edition thank you for tuning in this is scott from the pressing matters if you like the content, please remember to subscribe so we can bring you more along these lines. Thanks so much.